Hello everyone. Over thousands of years, our planet has been inhabited by many different animals. Some of the species have survived to this day, but some, unfortunately, are considered to be extinct. However, this doesn't mean that we'll never have the opportunity to see a mammoth or scratch the ear of a saber-toothed tiger, because science is developing, and very soon, scientists will learn how to bring disappeared species back to life. Do you want to take a look at the future inhabitants of this Jurassic Park? Then let's get it on. Siberian Unicorn Surely most of our viewers believe that unicorns don't actually exist. Well, let's get things straight. The fantastic idea of a beautiful white horse with a shining horn, that is really far from reality, because unicorns look a little different. Okay, okay, in fact, this strange creature lives in Eurasia and is an ancient relative of the rhinoceros, and it really has one horn. Siberian unicorns, according to the latest information, died out just about 26,000 years ago. That is, they could well be the the origin of legends about magical creatures with one horn. But the most important thing is that such young bones found by scientists give us a chance to revive the Siberian unicorn today. Truth be told, no one is working on the DNA isolation, but it seems that it won't be so difficult to return this unusual creature to our planet. Ground Sloth Looking at the bones of this creature, you might think that it's some prehistoric bear, but it actually is a sloth. A very, very big sloth. These creatures could reach a height of 6 meters and died out not so long ago, about 8,000 years. The last ground sloths lived in South America and the natives often fought them. Most likely it was because of hunters that this species ceased to exist. Sloths moved too slowly and couldn't hide somewhere in a tree, and therefore were an easy prey. But today, scientists have a huge amount of remains of these creatures, including bones and skin. And although it's not easy to extract DNA from them, it is still possible. The only problem is its relatives. Modern sloth females are too small to be the mums of these giants. However, in the future, scientists for certain will find out a solution. Mammoth of course, we can't talk about ancient animals coming back to life and not mention mammoths. In the end, when people think about extinct species, these fluffy elephants come to mind first. The remains of these ancient giants are found quite often and in fairly good condition, so there is hope. Researchers will soon get the right genetic material. Several laboratories in different countries of the world are trying to isolate mammoth DNA. Most likely, the source of DNA for cloning will be the wool of these prehistoric animals, while the female African African elephant will be suitable for the role of the future mother for the first mammoth of the 21st century. And in Yakutia, for the last 20 years, researchers have been preparing a house for this beast, restoring the vegetative diversity of the mammoth steppes. By the way, the extinction of mammoths also caused the disappearance of different plants in the north of the planet, and scientists hope that, with the return of the ancient animals, the rich prehistoric flora will also return. Saber-toothed cat well, we had a sloth and a mammoth, now to complete the set of characters from Ice Age, we just need a saber-toothed cat or tiger. To be honest, when you see the impressive fangs of this ancient feline, you begin to wonder whether it's worth returning this species at all. However, for scientists, saber-toothed cats are reliable candidates for resurrection. First, they died out relatively recently, about 11,000 years ago. And secondly, their fossils are well preserved thanks to the frosty habitat. And the most important argument is that they're just great. Jokes aside, saber-toothed cats are considered one of the most interesting species that ever existed on the planet. Although probably our ancestors wouldn't have understood our interest. In the ancient world, it was somehow not accepted to return to life the beings who try to eat you. Irish Elk do you remember the elk of Thranduil from The Hobbit? Well, or a deer. People on the internet don't know for sure which kind of animal this mysterious beast is. However, the name is not as important as the fact that scientists will soon return these amazing animals to our planet. Well, maybe. Meet the Irish deer, an extinct cloven-hoofed mammal from the genus of the giant deer, who once existed on Earth. Yes, this isn't a product of the fantasy of Peter Jackson and his animators, but a real beast, albeit extinct. 
The Irish deer stands out for its large size and huge horns, which could reach four meters in scope. Needless to say, with such a luxurious design on the head, the deer simply couldn't live among the trees and therefore became extinct when the forests began to expand to open spaces. Fortunately for scientists, it's not difficult to find the remains of this giant, just like its great-great-grandsons, the fallow deer. All this makes the Irish deer one of the first applicants in the queue for resurrection, so perhaps in a few years, each of us can feel a little bit like Thranduil. Aurochs this primitive wild bull, the progenitor of all species of modern cattle, inhabited the forest and steppes of the Eastern Hemisphere a long time ago. Sadly, it was declared extinct in 1627, all due to the destruction of its natural habitat and constant hunting. Despite the fact that this animal hasn't existed for almost 400 years, the DNA structure of its descendants is considered similar to the genetic basis of the ancestor. There were attempts to bring back this giant bull to life in Germany in the 1920s and 30s, and as a result, a breed called Heck cattle was born. Nevertheless, Heck cattle were less similar to an Auroch than many modern breeds of cows, and therefore a new project to revive this species appeared in the Netherlands, the Auroch program. Scientists cross primitive breeds of European cattle among themselves, trying to get an animal that, in its appearance, size, and behavior, will be similar to an Auroch. Another project is being implemented in Poland. Scientists from the Polish Association for the reproduction of aurochs intend to use the DNA preserved in bones from archaeological finds for cloning. In general, it's quite possible that soon there will be several variants of modern aurochs living. Dodo the dodo bird, known to many from the book Alice in Wonderland, lived only in one place on Earth, the island of Mauritius, located east of Madagascar. <coughs> In 1598, it was discovered and described by a Dutch expedition, and by 1662, the dodo practically disappeared. No ice age, no problems with the environment. The thing is that these birds couldn't fly at all because they didn't have any enemies in their natural habitat. The funny-looking dodos became an easy prey for sailors and soon disappeared completely. Later, they became a symbol of the Jurel Wildlife Conservation Trust. A dodo statue can be seen at the entrance of their wildlife park. Fortunately, at the disposal of scientists today, there are skeletons of these birds, which means that hopefully they will return. Gastric Brooding Frog To bring an extinct animal back to life, it must be cloned. And for this, scientists need to find the most intact DNA. Therefore, those species that disappeared not so long ago have an advantage. For example, the gastric brooding frog. This species of amphibians was known for the fact that the mother hatched the eggs inside her stomach until the frogs themselves jumped out from her mouth. Yeah, like some sort of weird kangaroo. Unfortunately, for unknown reasons, gastric brooding frogs were extinct in the mid-1980s. Some blame the bad ecology in the area, and others point to natural causes within the population. We're unlikely to find out what exactly happened to the gastric brooding frog, but in the 70s, scientists froze samples of their tissues, which are now being used to resurrect the animal. And we can say that they have had some success by creating several embryos, although it's too early to speak about the return of this unusual frog. Well, science doesn't rush, and when it comes to bringing an animal back to life, you need patience. Stella's Sea Cow this incredibly large marine animal, 8 meters long and 6 meters in diameter, was discovered in 1741 by the expedition of Vitus Bering on the Commander Islands. However, by 1768, all these unusual creatures were completely destroyed due to the actions of hunters. Scientists believe that if Stella's cow survived to the present era, it could become the first domesticated marine animal. It was a two-peace-loving creature, and perhaps we will soon see it again, because geneticists have enough suitable material for DNA extraction. For example, the ultra-modern cloning laboratory located in Yakutia is actually working on it. Woolly Rhinoceros Yes, mammoths were not the only big fluffy animals that lived in the frosty tundra of the Pleistocene period. The woolly rhinoceroses roamed in the Arctic snow 10,000 years ago. 
thanks to their thick fur, they felt good, even in severe frosts. But they couldn't survive climate change and the encounters with other animals. Ancient people also were a problem to the woolly rhinos, and as a result, these unusual animals died out. But their remains are perfectly preserved, which means that scientists can fully isolate their DNA. It's only a matter of time and money, really. And the modern Sumatran rhinoceros, the closest relative, will most likely become the bearer of the embryo of the woolly giant. Neanderthal no, it's not a joke. Today, scientists really say that Neanderthals, the ancient people, extinct about 40,000 years ago, can return to our planet. The project for the revival of the Neanderthal is perhaps the most interesting on our list, although it is quite controversial from the ethical point of view. But it has already been proved that the Neanderthal man is not the ancestor of modern sapiens, so geneticists literally have a chance to give birth to a new intelligent being. However, according to scientists, such an incredible scientific study is possible only theoretically. We have no suitable equipment, nor the skills to do it, not yet, at least. But German scientists from the Max Planck Institute are going to start working on a miniature Neanderthal brain. This, of course, doesn't mean that the result in the literal sense of the word will look like a brain. Scientists plan to implant Neanderthal genes in the human genome, and all this will occur inside the stem cell. The experiment may seem strange, but it will allow geneticists to find out the differences between the thinking processes of the Neanderthals and the Cro-Magnons. Who knows, maybe this will bring us closer to cloning our ancestors. Hey, stop being lazy, it's time to use that brain of yours. Welcome to Brain Time. Incredible facts from the past, the present, and even the future. The power of nature and wild animals. Amazing facts and unsolved mysteries. You'll find all this and much more here. Subscribe now, you won't regret it.